back. It's a uh, Thirsty Thursday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. You may remember, going back a few weeks ago, we had on uh, Freddie Gray, all right? And uh, Freddie Gray is the, uh, I believe, the managing editor of The Spectator US, so USA. They launched it uh, about a month ago. He was in town, did some interviews. We tricked him into coming down here to Liquid Lunch. He was totally caught off guard, but uh, then he settled in quite nicely, and now he's... Uh, now I guess he's recommended that Melissa Chen come join us from uh, The Spectator also. Thank you so much for coming down. And, um, Thank you for having me. Freddie was quite loose. He was willing to have a drink and sit back and relax. Oh, sorry about that. It's, it's okay. okay. No, I like no. that. That's All right. That's sorry cool. about that. My pen just goes off randomly sometimes. So uh, Spectator is well known around the world, of course, and big in the UK. Yes. And now you guys are making an effort to bring the Spectator type of... of journalism and reporting to the USA, right? Right, right. So um, what's your main focus right now? So I was just appointed the New York editor of Spectator USA. I like it. Um, it's, it's, it's the longest running you know, English language magazine. It's been around since 1828. That was the year Andrew Jackson was president of the United States. It was a really long time. So it's finally made its way across the pond. And uh, it's got a reputation for being a center-right publication that pulls no punches. So very lighthearted style, and everyone from the Queen subscribes to it, the Queen of England, to uh, your average bricklayer. One so it's thing got a really interesting um, that I took uh, issue with Freddie on was he uh, recapped his visit to the States, I guess in the first edition or on his blog, and he said that coming to Liquid Lunch was his favorite interview. Wow. Um, but he referred to our studio here as a rinky-dink studio. Um, Where's the lie? Yeah, I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I say fake news. Okay. Um, but no, I'm joking around. It was actually quite charming to be called Rinky Dink. Yeah, it's got a um, plucky yeah, I yeah, like spirit. Yeah, I'm, I'm joking. Yeah. Well, you weren't here then. You weren't here when Freddie was here. No, I wasn't. I read the article. I read The Spectator, yeah, okay. uh, USA, and otherwise. Just making sure you're up to speed. Uh, Melissa, you had a, uh, we won't pick your brain on a number of issues in the news, but you had a fascinating column about Congress's vote to recognize the Armenian genocide, which the Turks are not at all happy about, and I'm sure President Trump's going to get an earful about that. But you said this vote actually exposes a little bit of hypocrisy on the part of Ilhan Omar. How so? Well, she um, pretty much... All Lives Matter, the uh, Armenian Genocide Resolution that was being passed by the House, um, saying that we can't recognize this unless we recognize all the other injustices. Like the, uh, she, she claimed that hundreds of millions of um, Native Americans were, were slaughtered, and that should be recognized as a genocide. Uh, she talked about the, uh, the Atlantic, transatlantic slave trade as well. And um, so she, she wanted these things recognized in order to be able to to vote yes, or vote. instead she voted present. Um, but that was her reason for actually abstaining. I don't know, Frankie loves getting into these international issues, but I guess it's on our shores if the House is voting right, exactly. you know, on this stuff. Right. What's, um, what's big news with Spectator US? What are you doing different for the brand here in the US than what you do at the mothership? Well, for starters, it's a lot more American writers. So, you know, the British have their own style of writing and, and their own style of journalism. Um, they're kind of funny. The Brits are funny, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, they crack me up all the time. Especially their um, teeth. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just kidding, have, Not they, you. They have this irreverent style, you know, yeah. with, with how they, they cover stories and... Um, uh, like by making fun of their teeth, like Frank. He and has your a, studio, he has an really. And our studio. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, but he did have a drink with us, with me. Oh, the Brits um, are very good at that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pop culture is huge. If you're going to be um, warmly welcomed into the Liquid Lunch Studios, then maybe have we have. could have a drink. Sure. Or, to, to celebrate. Unless you think it impugns your journalistic may, integrity. May, uh, no. may I get um, some uh, ice, please? I also want to ask you about this um, decision by Twitter to stop accepting political advertising. A lot of politicians seem upset with this. Yeah. What's your take? Well... The Democrats seem to be fully on board with it. They actually really love the idea of, of, you know, stopping these political ads on Twitter. But what this really comes down to, it, it seems to be a matter of Twitter versus Facebook. Because Mark Zuckerberg recently addressed Congress and basically said that they weren't going to um, adjudicate what was true and what was not true on Facebook. Versus, you know, the contrast that Twitter is trying to set up is we're different. We're not going to be Mark Zuckerberg. 
and we're going to ban all paid political content, which then draws the question, what is political ads, right? So sure, you have campaigns that now can't advertise, but what about advocacy groups? Right. What about issues? PACs. Exactly. What about PACs? Yeah. Suppose they want to run an ad to support a candidate. Uh, suppose they want to make an artistic ad and it's just maybe not named for a political thing. Then you, now we're getting into Jack Dorsey calling balls and strikes. Exactly. You know, Melissa, we began the show talking about Elizabeth Warren's proposal for a wealth tax and Bill Gates pushing back on this. Yeah. Uh, what's your reaction to this Warren-Gates feud? Um, it's... Well, firstly, Elizabeth Warren has the reputation of, of being anti-billionaire, right? Like, she's been pushing back on that. Um, and right now with, you know, basically she said she wanted to pass this wealth tax. And that's been a, a policy that I think Bernie Sanders also supports. Um, and Bill Gates kind of came out saying, well, if, if Elizabeth Warren wants to do that, I'm going to have to do some math and consider some things. And of course, the uh, progressive class was a little up in arms. Um, I don't know if they've been trying to cancel Bill Gates yet, but at mm. least, you know, come on. This is the guy that has spent so much of his career. He's created so many jobs. You know, he's, I mean, I, really his only crime is that he made this Microsoft Word thing with the, clip, the paperclip guy. <laughs> That's the most annoying thing he's ever done. But, but, you know, like for the world, Bill Gates has done more philanthropy than than anybody else has. But probably everybody else combined. Um, Correct. Melissa, uh, a lot of people are flocking to theaters to see the new film, The Irishman. I yeah. caught you on uh, John's friend Neil Cavuto's show the other day talking about this. There apparently is a big debate over Hollywood versus Netflix. What's appropriate? Do you think it's okay that a movie that's going to be available on streaming should be viewed the same way as movies that are just released theatrically and then go the conventional home video release route? I mean, I'm, per I'm personally okay with that. I don't know if Martin Scorsese is okay with that. I mean, he probably, as you know, a true artist, he probably likes the fact that this film, this three, three and a half hour epic, be consumed in the way that he thinks it should be consumed. It's like, you know, you have a really fancy chef who, who made a, a nice steak and he doesn't want it with ketchup, right? right? It's like serving tequila in martini glasses. Exactly. Well, that's right. what we're working right. with this here is, in this our Rinky wrong. Dink studio. This is the question tequila. Thank you. Thank you. Special extra añejo from, Thank you. Of, from our greatest sponsor. And, uh, Cheers. Let's toast to you on your new Thank appointment you. as the New York City editor for The Thank Spectator. You. To your rinky dink and, studio. Thank you. Excellent. Oh, I'm liking her more by the minute. I was going to suggest to you that, uh, you know, all things New York come by you. Um, maybe stopping by every so often and uh, checking out on what's happening with the spectator. Sure. Let's try to upgrade it from rinky dink next time. That would be great. She's no rinky dink reporter, that's for sure. She's running the New York City uh, Bureau of the Spectator USA. So uh, don't get on her bad side if you're in New York because you're going to have a problem. Uh, there'll be no problem after this when Frank and I come back and finish up hour two. A couple more segments left, and uh, it's all coming your way right after this.